everyone. In this video, we're going to start our last chapter for the quarter, aromatic compounds. So the most common aromatic compound that we talk about is benzene, um, but I have some other examples of aromatic compounds down below. So uh, you might be familiar with some of these, like pyridine. We've talked about uh, pyridine in some of our reactions. Uh, we've talked about tetrahydrofuran before, and furan is a five-membered ring with an oxygen atom and a couple of pi bonds there. And then we've got naphthalene and indole. And down below, you can actually see that ions can also be considered aromatic compounds. So we've got this tropilium ion, which is positively charged. And then we also have cyclopentadienyl anion. Now, off to the right-hand side, we have a counterexample. So cyclooctatetraene is not aromatic, even though it looks like an aromatic compound. It has alternating double bonds, um, but there's actually a very specific definition for aromatic compounds. So let's go over that. So in the past, scientists um, thought of aromatic compounds as compounds that had a smell to them or they were fragrant. So let's just write that old definition down. So we'll just write compounds that smell. <laughs> they were aromatic. But the new definition is uh, very specific. So this new definition tells us that aromatic compounds have a planar ring system with 4n plus 2 pi electrons that are delocalized. And N could be 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. So if a ring structure has 2 electrons or 6 electrons or 10 electrons, and, and those would be pi electrons that are delocalized, then it's aromatic. So we'll talk more about that uh, definition later on. But let's talk about the most commonly known aromatic compound, which is benzene. Okay, so benzene has alternating double bonds, and um, the structure was actually uh, found by August Kekulé in 1866. So this is called a Kekulé structure. I think I'm pronouncing his name correctly. Um, but this has a resonance structure. So those pi electrons are actually delocalized. So we could draw them moving around the ring. And we could also draw the hybrid structure here. And we can just draw a circle in the middle to indicate that those pi electrons are delocalized. So they're not actually static between certain carbons. They're actually constantly moving around the ring. Oh, and I'll write benzene here just to make it clear. <laughs> All right, so in this video, we're mostly going to focus on the nomenclature for aromatic compounds, specifically benzene with different substituents attached. And then in the next lecture, we'll talk a little bit more about reactions on a benzene ring. All right, so let's talk about how we name compounds. 
So we have a few different scenarios that could occur here with benzene. So in the first scenario, uh, let's say we have two substituents attached and they're opposite each other. So we'll just label those substituents A and B. Okay, now we could number our way around the ring and say, okay, A is at position one, B is at position four. Uh, so we could name it using locants or numbers. Uh, the other way that we could specify that the substituents are directly across from each other is using the word para. And we could go a step further and just use a P to show that A and B are across from each other. Now, what if those two substituents are on carbons one and three. So we could go around the ring and number those substituents and say they're at positions one and three, or we could use the term meta. And again, we could take that a step further and just use the letter M for meta. All right, and then in our last scenario, maybe the two substituents are right next to each other on carbons one and two. We would call uh, this ortho. So the substituents are ortho to each other and we would use the letter O. So again, if two substituents are para to each other, then they're on carbons one and four on the benzene ring. If the two substituents are meta to each other, then they're on positions one and three. And if they're ortho to each other, then they're on carbons one and two. So that's the first uh, naming rule. Now the next one, um, we often need to name these ring systems uh, using a parent name. So there's some common names that we can use. So for instance, let's say we have a benzene ring with a methyl group attached. Uh, the name for this is toluene. So that could be our parent name. So instead of trying to find the longest carbon chain, for instance, we would just use the term toluene. Another one that we are familiar with from a previous chapter is phenol. So that has an alcohol group bonded to the benzene ring. The next one has a methoxy group bonded to it. So I'll just write CH3 there. And uh, this would be called anisole. The next one has a carboxylic acid group attached. So this would be called benzoic acid. The next one has a ketone attached with a methyl group. So this one is acetophenone. So just to warn you, there's a lot of these. <laughs> um, the next one has a double bond uh, attached, but there's actually a two carbon chain there and the double bond is between the first and second carbons. And this is called styrene. So you might remember this from when we talked about um, uh, making really long chains of carbons, like nylon, for instance. 
All right, the next one has an aldehyde attached, and we've actually synthesized this in the lab. This is called benzaldehyde. The next one has an amine attached, NH2. This is called aniline or aniline. And finally, if you have um, two methyl groups that are para to each other, so they're directly across from each other, this is called xylene. All right, so these are the names that we'll use um, when we're naming benzene rings and their substituents. So let's just go over a couple of examples so you can get an idea of how these parent names work. Okay, so let's start with the following. We've got our benzene ring and we have a CH3 group attached. And then let's say we also have NO2 substituents around the ring. Okay, so what would our parent name be? So if we go back to the last slide, um, I don't see any benzene rings with NO2 attached, um, but I do see one with a methyl group attached. That's the first one we drew called toluene. So toluene will be our parent name. And I'll just highlight the toluene molecule there. So again, this kind of takes the place of finding the longest carbon chain. In this example, we're just trying to find a common name, like a common molecule that comes up a lot. And in this case, it's a benzene ring with a methyl group attached. So that's toluene. Okay, so now we have to name the other substituents around the ring. Um, NO2, I'll just highlight, that is a nitro group. Okay, so let's figure out uh, the location of each nitro group. So I'm gonna start at the methyl group since that's part of our parent compound there. So that's number one, and then we'll go around the ring. And we can see that the nitro groups are at position two, position four, and position six. All right, so the way we would name this is 246-trinitrotoluene. So this is actually the molecule TNT, which is an explosive. And you might have seen TNT in like cartoons growing up or, or just in general. So this is what TNT looks like. All right, let's look at another example. Let's say we have a benzene ring and we have a two carbon chain coming off of it with a double bond between carbons one and two. And let's say we also have a bromine attached and a chlorine attached. All right, so again, we're going to try to find the parent name or the parent compound. So let's go back. Now I don't see any benzene rings with chlorine or bromine on them, but I do see one with that double bond. So that looks like it is styrene. And I'll just highlight that as well so you can remember Okay, so now we just have to figure out uh, where the bromine and the chlorine are located relative to 
the styrene substituent there. All right, so that uh, two carbon chain will be our uh, position one. And again, we want to make sure our other substituents have the lowest number possible. So if we were to start numbering going counterclockwise, they would not have the lowest numbers possible. So we're going to go clockwise. All right, so bromine is at position two. So we'll, we'll call that two dash bromo. Chlorine is at position four. So four dash chloro, and notice that I alphabetized bromo and chloro, so I put bromo first, and then we'll follow that with the parent name, styrene. Oh, and I forgot to highlight styrene, there we go. Okay, let's try one more, and this one I'll have you try on your own. Okay, so we have a benzene ring with a bromine and an ethyl group attached. So um, the parent name might not be one of the ones on the previous slide. It could just be benzene. But I'll let you try to figure out uh, this name on your own first. And when you unpause the video, we'll go over it together. Okay, so again, uh, we don't have any substituents attached that would give us one of these parent names that we talked about. So the parent name is just benzene. Okay, so now we're just going to try to list our different substituents. Um, so there's a couple different ways you could do this. You could number the substituents one and two. And um, let's see, this would be one bromo, two ethyl benzene. Or you could use one of the para, meta, or ortho designations instead of the numbers. So looking at our molecule, uh, bromine and ethyl are right next to each other. They're on neighboring carbons. So would we use para, meta, or ortho? Ortho. So we don't even have to write ortho. We could just write O bromo ethyl benzene now you might be wondering why did i give bromine priority over ethyl when i was numbering the ring um, so if you're stuck on how to number the substituents uh, you're just going to go in alphabetical order so whatever has um, or whatever comes first in the alphabet will get the number one, the next one will get number two. Now, in some situations, you might have to number everything so that they have the lowest number possible. Um, but in this situation, bromine would come first, so it gets number one. Okay, so we'll stop there for this video. In the next one, we'll talk about benzene and some of its reactions. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the stability of benzene because it does have those delocalized electrons. All right, so I will see you then.